garage. All right. Come on in. So we currently have an event going on right now with the main floor. Not a whole lot of activity happens here on the main floor. So I can take you up to the second floor and the third floor and we'll kind of just start there and I can explain the history. Cool. There's been stories from a lot of Elks members here on this landing that they see a female spirit that just hangs out right here and looks out the window and she's been heard by some of the Elks members as well. So if you want to come on up this way. All right, so this is the second floor. There's actually a lot of activity on the second floor. We've caught a ton of activity here in the last investigation that we did with Crossover Paranormal Scouts with uh, Eric and Steven. Do you want to say hi? Hello. All right, so these are actually the offices and in this office, the gentleman that used to be one of the Elks members here actually committed suicide in this office. In the office? Yep. Wow. So one of the original teams that came in and investigated, Charlotte, which you'll meet tonight, she just put like an EVP reader under this door and caught the mail talking. So, cool. you never know if you might be able to do that, but that is a suicide that we had right here on this floor. So... Do you have a name for that person? Do you guys remember, is it William? His name is William. Okay. Because there was apartments back this way. Do you have IR on that? Yeah. So this was an apartment for a gentleman who was actually extremely large, like 600 pounds. Wow. And he used to live on this floor back in the 60s, and they called him Tiny. So he died back here, and he died. So Tiny died out also? Tiny, yes. Yep. So okay. Two deaths here on this floor. Have you ever felt like you had any contact with Tiny or? No, we try to reach Tiny, but I've never got like the EVP or name with Tiny. We have caught male voices on this floor many times. Our REM pod, which we rarely get activity from, has gone off many times up here. So that's the kind of activity. We do catch EVPs, but just never catch a name. So. Okay. Do you feel like this is the most active floor? Yes. Okay. This and is the most active floor. Our here the last time with Rich, yeah. um, we caught some stuff up here on this third floor. The third floor is also very active. The problem is, is this used to be the brothel. It started out as a hotel. Um, it was built as like a luxury hotel, one of the first hotels in Florence actually. And this was a high-end brothel. So as you pass the rooms, you'll notice there's just a room and a window. The bathroom, there's, I mean, it's just so odd how it's set up, but they're viewing windows. There's no purpose to have those windows. So if you come down here, these would be the viewing windows so you can view the females. And then if you know, if you're interested, you're gonna pay or whatever, that's, there's just a door and a viewing window. Pretty cool. Yeah, and we get a lot of EVPs up here. We've gotten two names. One of them is Rick. Um, Rick and Carl. That, those are two names we get out of here almost every time we're up here, actually. So, a lot of those viewing rooms. So you got a camera and a motion detector. And then you have the regular rooms where the gentleman would stay, you know, actually stay for the night. So, high-end brothel, and that's what it was as part of the hotel until the Elks Lodge got it. So, and did we ever determine when they took it over? Um, the gal that I interviewed wasn't real sure, but she figured it to be around 1904, it was 1908. It between, I think, yeah, or, or 1906, if I can remember. It's, it's something we can look up. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but yeah. early 1900s. Yeah, pretty cool. The Elks took it over. Do you happen to know what the hotel was? 
back in the day, what the name was? Okay. This is uh, interesting that these two rooms have these huge attics. Yeah. For some reason. Last time we were here, we got um, on the Opulus River attic and child, and we actually caught a child scream. That's on our last video, so if you want that for your video for this one, we'll we can, we can let you use that. I'll have to go back. I, I can't even recall what we caught that night. I think it was like a scream. Yeah, yeah, we catch quite a few screams. This hallway, for whatever reason, for me, has always been very creepy. You get smells in this hallway, electrical charges on your body. I usually feel it up here on the top of my head. Something like static electricity happens here. Um, lots of EVPs, and we caught a shadow. Shadow comes across this way, goes right into here. It's a black shadow and it says hello. I'm getting nothing on the EVPs up here, but I am definitely creeped out up here. If you could, I would like to know your name. Or maybe you could tell me my name. Yeah. Almost sounded like it was back there. I was walking. Was that you walking over there? Sean Couchet. Sean Couchet. Sorry about that. Yeah. And then there's a third hallway. This is here in this room. This is the room on this back hallway that we always get EMF readings in. We'll get tapping in this room, EMF readings in this room. What it is about that room, I don't know. The electricity doesn't work in there. So. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where the EMF reading comes from. So we can head down to the basement. I just need to figure out which key you're going to Okay. Out. Somewhere you got I hear them. There they are. Yeah. Um we set this up last time we did a group and uh Sean did a um really good job down here. We had like six or seven different instruments set up and and uh, JK from JK forty right, right. Um and yeah, we've, we've caught EVPs down here. Uh, we've had instruments go off down here, like K2s. Um, I think we've had some experiences down here. Now, did you guys have, uh, didn't you have an encounter with a voice or somebody yeah. scream? Oh, or? Big scream down here, actually, right to the bridge where the steam is left. Is where we caught it. We're coming across here. And it just went, and then it was done. And it, it was like tapped on the head. We've been tapped on the head down here. Yep. yep. And then no. right where you guys are standing is where we caught that. 
Yeah. Mist. This oh, was the yeah, right swirling mist right here. Nice. When okay. This was all set up as a haunted house. Yeah. So are you going to set a static camera up in here then? Yeah. Or? Right. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll probably hit record. I'm just trying to figure out what the heck they would have used this for back in the day with all these rooms. You know? You know, I think a lot of it, the way they built a lot of it was uh, for that haunted house. Maybe like some of that stuff back there in the yeah. and stuff like that. This is definitely an old shower. Look at those shower heads. Mm -hmm. This is original, uh, yeah, send everybody to the basement to shower up. Yeah. Wow, that is really old. Hmm. And it's all plumbed. Look at that. That's leaking. Right there. The water leak. Oh, yeah. Yep, and it's the old galvanized. The problem with galvanized is you start fixing one leak and you get a leak there. And then you get a leak there. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm trying to find you without making a lot of noise. That's alright. I set some cat balls down in those chairs, so we'll see if we can go off. Names on the camera, so when we would review footage, that's okay, when we would hear it. okay, cool. I thought maybe he knew somebody like Tiny that was downstairs that passed away, and no, but I can't seem to figure out who's Tiny, you know, his real name wasn't Tiny. Oh, really? Nobody knows, no. Uh. <laughs> As you see the K2 meters and they're kind of blinking there, probably because of my phone or anybody else's phones that are on, but it will light up two more levels. There's a, a yellow and a, a red light that will go off. We saw a little bit of that when she was up there. Like right. But right now, I think it's just, just uh, our phones. 
Because I don't think there's any, is, is, does the electrical work here? Some of it. Some of it. Some, some of it. Yeah. yeah. Even then, it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect it from that distance down to the chair, but the phones would. And I think if I get closer, yeah. Yeah. So that's what's happening there. RIMPOD works differently, though. It won't, won't go off like the K2. And in fact, RIMPODs don't go off that often. It's very rare that they do. Go with all the books. I think that time that Rich and I were here, it went off. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and, and we heard that scream up here. And, and we were actually heading down. We, we, we were on the landing of the stairs and heard, heard the scream behind us and came back up. Mm. So why is that a thing? The later the hour, the more activity. Is there a reason behind it or is it just... The... I honestly think it's because you start investigating, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then maybe the spirit gets more comfortable with you towards, you know, as the night goes on. Right. Um, Another theory, too, is the fact that uh, the electromagnetic fields are starting to die down at night due to the fact that uh, during the daylight hours, the sun emits so many um, electromagnetic fields that it's really, really busy and active during the daytime hours. Whereas at night, once the sun goes down and it's blocked by the earth um, and becomes more shadowed, those electromagnetic fields die down and they're, they're able to use more of the ambient energy to react. And that's kind of why they come up with the witching hour yeah. is because it's the most quiet time as far as electromagnetic fields are concerned. Okay. I wonder if you can see that. Cool little. by the wiring it's the old knob and tube yeah there we go we can definitely see the uh, knob and tube wiring up there looks like little telephone lines going everywhere that's what would create all the fires because there is no there is no uh, break or two you know if they crossed wires they just sit there and arc until they catch fire phasmophobia they call them dots I'll turn them on
So I went around the corner here to the center area. Very strong smell. Right in this area here. It smells like, to me, like hair dye. Like I've been in a barber shop or a beauty salon while someone's getting their hair done and it smells like hair dye. Very strong right here. Bring somebody up later with me and see if they smell that smell. Eric, you got a second? Yeah, I'm Up here, I just want to see if you smell anything. And if so, try to describe what you smell. Which one? Right here. Almost like sulfur. Yeah, kind of. You know what it smells like to me? Yeah, if I'm in a beauty salon getting my hair cut. Oh, yeah. It smells perm. like, yeah, perm or hair dye. Mm -hmm. Big time. Yeah. Very strong right here. Yeah, Interesting. It sure is. Yeah. Okay, at least I got validation on what I'm smelling. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Cool. Alright, so I'm the only one down here, um, there hasn't been anybody come down here tonight, I mean we did an earlier inspection of the area, um, yeah I'm getting good internet still, so let's see what's going on down here, we did have um, some the last time we were here, we had some uh, screaming going on here, some touching, uh, some shadow figures. So let's just see what we come up with. Uh, Sean set up this table, in fact, to do an EVP session with the people. So I think that's probably a good place for us to set up. We do have a static camera set up right here. He's got the laser grid. Um, shining there. I'm going to go ahead and turn this light off. Who's that? It's, it's Steve. Oh, okay. I'm going to set up portal down here. Okay. And bring those ladies down here. Uh, they're going to step outside and smell them real quick. Sure. Okay. Cool. Do you have anything you want to say? You can speak through this box. You can use the energy through it. Hmm. Hello. What's your name? Could you tell us your name, please? I swear to God, he's like, what? What? <laughs> Are you having a hard time gearing us? Yeah. She's got the mask. So. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that could be what it is. It's just a dust mask, guys. It's okay. Do you know what COVID is? <laughs> <laughs> Who's the president? We don't know. <laughs> did, did you hear that? <laughs> right, everybody knows who the president is. <laughs> we got it based off of that. <laughs> Are there two? Two spirits here with us? Yeah, that's not like mm -hmm. Mick or something like that. Mm -hmm. Was that Mick? Victoria? Because I don't know Victoria came across up here when mm -hmm. we were asking that. Thank 
turn it down actually for me. What did you do if you worked here? Were you part of the hotel staff? And actually, during the big triantula migration, they are bigger than this. Ugh. They're bigger than that. Sounds good to me. Where are you go? I mean, you stay down or what? Yeah. In command. Here. Are they upstairs? Tell the girls. They smelled it too. Okay, what what did you smell? Uh, yeah. So what do you smell? It's like an ammonia smell. We were just having this like a like a. He said like per. I said like burnt cat pee, which is like. An ammonia smell. Yeah, I, I definitely got the smell when I'm in getting a haircut in a beauty salon and somebody's yeah, dyeing their hair. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've said, yeah, less burnt pee, rolling. Okay. Yeah, yeah, perm or. Ammonia smell. Yeah, yeah. But it's real, real strong right here. Yep, yeah, right here. And nowhere else, that's the funny thing. It's, it, it stopped me dead in my tracks. You know? And the only reason all the trim is missing and the walls look the way they did is because they took the original trim out up here and sold it. Oh, wow. Sold it to raise money for the lodge. As, as being from the famed brothel or, or? Sold it because there's a lot of Victorian houses downtown. Oh, so people are going to buy it. To wow. It huh. Because it's the old, you know, five and a half to six inch mahogany. Yeah, yeah. Mahogany or oak trim. I did find one piece. Yeah, right there in that corner. See it? Yeah. That's that's the only piece of molding I ever saw on the floor. Yep, they tore it out years ago and sold it. That's it's sad. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, there you go. Are you trying to get to us now? No. Hi. Oh, the light came on? The REM pod, yeah. Cool. Hello? This is one of the only places that ever. And it just got cooler right here. Yeah, and the Rialto Theater. Too. We did this in the Rialto Theater one, in one night. And that was. Scary. Well, there's definitely a breeze coming down here now. I feel it on the back of my neck yeah. and my hands. Darren, are you in here? Well, that thing was here pretty much constant the whole time, huh? Mm -hmm. Can you pass through that red pot again that's on the floor? Hmm. That's funny. 
came over here to sit in this chair. Nice. <laughs> the shadow. Nice. You go right ahead. Sucker. Can you make that device with the red light, the small red light, light up again? He did it once. You don't have to be afraid. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <He's> right there. <laughs> Okay, we're heading out. Where to next? Oops. On the wall. She was seeing it, the, the red, the glow from the glow yeah. on the wall. And when I looked, I could see it, but it wasn't as, as bright as she was describing it. So. My immediate thought it was light from outside or light from downstairs reflecting off the wall. But that is at a distance. And it's not coming directly at the wall. I'm just trying to see. Is it my understanding this is the first time you guys ever investigated? Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> But it seems in all that uh, there's not a lot going on. Nothing outrageous uh, other than that smell. Uh, a couple of, couple of times the REM pod's gone off, but nothing too spectacular. Spirit box was pretty, pretty quiet. So in all, it was a, uh, one of those quiet investigations, still fun. I, you know, it doesn't matter to me so much that I capture something, that's always the icing on the cake. But for me, it's just fun being in locations like this, you know, this, this investigation stuff takes me to some pretty wild locations. Let me see if I got a cord in the way there. Sorry about that. Um, takes me to some pretty cool locations. Very unique. Um, I got to see things that most people don't. And I got to share them with you. And to me, that's, that's the fun of it. It's the fun of the chase. It's the fun of the location. Um, I like the history. And so just because something didn't happen necessarily tonight, nothing creepy, nothing out of out of the ordinary to the point where I would call it paranormal. Um, that's okay, because here I am, and you're here with me.